want to thank you for taking the time to come out here. Uh, I know it's a mandatory all hands meeting, but listen, I'm a civil <laughs> servant too. <laughs> I know how that works. Uh, so I do appreciate everything you've done. And thanks to Scott and Matt for their leadership out here. Uh, I had a chance to talk to them yesterday and get a chance to see parts of the reservation. Of course, it's hard to see 586 square miles in a day, and it's even harder hard to do it in two days, so I'm clearly going to have to come back. But I had a chance to understand the breadth and scope of the work you do here, and it is truly amazing uh, the, the amount of work that you have here. Let me say a few words about uh, Tracy uh, for a second. I never get a chance to embarrass her, so where is she? I want to see her face here. But um, Tracy is an amazing person. And she is a very humble person. Uh, she never talks about what she's accomplished. She always talks about what we have accomplished. It's never about her. It's always about the team. And uh, that particularly is evident in the work that she did in the NNSA, uh, leading the second line of defense programs, which if you're not familiar with that, is the program that's responsible for just installing radiation detectors around the world in seaports and land border crossings but particularly in, in these megaports around the world. Uh, and it reminds me of a, uh, prover a proverb in the book of Proverbs. Uh, there's some very wise sayings in that book. And one of them says, pride leads to disgrace, but humility, but with humility comes wisdom. And I think you've got somebody that's very wise. Well, I know you have somebody that's very wise in this position. She is going to be a solid rock from which this organization, this program, will continue to grow and continue to prosper and continue to succeed. So Tracy, I'm very glad that you've agreed to take on this assignment. Uh, all of you are blessed to be able to have Tracy uh, here in this position. I know I am blessed uh, by having her here because she's going to help me out as I take a look at the breadth of the work that we have to do, both in the NNSA as well as in the Environmental Management Program. A little bit about who I am. I'm a civil servant, just like you. You know, I started off in the Navy on active duty, but then after 10 years of active duty, shifted into the civil service, worked for the Department of the Navy, and then the Department of Energy 20 years ago. And uh, I uh, spent a lot of time, as Matt, just like you and Matt and Scott, working to make sure that the nation's work gets done. And uh, I recognize that civil servants catch a lot of flack, you know, for the work that they do. You know, we're characterized maybe in, maybe in the media or in other environments as uh, goofing off, but I know, I absolutely know that that's not true because I see the work that each and every one of us does every day and it's, it's truly amazing. I'm married, I have two kids. My daughter Anne is 25, she's a nurse. My son Tommy is a uh, 22, he's a civil engineer and just started work. It's great to have two kids that are working, it's amazing. I'm very happy with that. Big moment for me was when, uh, or my wife and I, Beth, uh, was when our uh, kids uh, took us out to dinner and picked up the tab. If that's never happened to you, uh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it was almost bigger than graduating from college. I mean, it was, uh, it was amazing, but uh, my wife, Beth, is a pastoral counselor. She's a chaplain at a hospital in Maryland. And uh, she always reminds me about what's important. When I come home from work at night, uh, she says, well, Tom, how was your day? We always ex have this standard question. I'm sure you do it too. How was your day? So I start recounting all of the things we did today. You know, I went to this meeting. We made that decision. I saw so-and-so. And uh, she immediately stops me and says, listen, I don't want to hear about the facts of the things you've accomplished today. I want to know who you've touched today. What impact have you made on someone's life? What kind of relationship have you nurtured? Because that's what really counts. The relationship is what really matters. And you know, as a, somebody who is trained in engineering and sciences, talking about feelings is really hard for me to do. So she leads me to the refrigerator, and there's a word of whole list of feeling words on the refrigerator that I have to go through and I have, I have to point to the word about how I'm feeling. I have a harder time even saying that word, but, but it's, it's a process, I guess, 20 years later, well, 25 years later, 26 actually. Uh, we're still working on the refrigerator words. Um, 
So I think I'm a little bit better than where I was 10 years ago, but just, uh, just a bit. The whole point is that uh, we are part of families. Uh, I consider the work we do in the Department of Energy is working with a family. I've spent a lot of time at work, and uh, I want to make sure that when you're at work, uh, you're feeling that you're accomplishing something because we believe this work is very important work and about getting things done. You know, we're blessed. We have jobs that matter. We have jobs first. We have jobs that matter. And we are all part, we have jobs that uh, allow us to do something bigger than what we could do individually in working at his team. And we're public servants. And as I mentioned earlier, public service doesn't always get the credit that it deserves on the outside, but I can tell you that it's just incredibly important. And I'm a public servant just like you are, and I want to uh, get this right. There's one thing I always come back to, and there's this phrase in the, in the Declaration of Independence and that goes along the lines, and you, you remember this uh, from your high school civics class, where it says that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and, and the pursuit of happiness. Everybody can probably say versions of that, you know, if you were asked. But the phrase that follows that is one that until about a year ago I didn't know, really know existed. But it goes on and it says, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, which I found amazing, you know. I never thought about the idea of you have to secure those unalienable rights and we have governments created. Now we're part of the government and in fact our job at the higher calling level is to secure those rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, this reservation here, the people here, the folks, your moms and dads and aunts and uncles that have worked here many years ago, maybe some of him, them are still here right now, but they were involved in the early days of securing these rights, and we continue in our job here in EM along that line to secure those particular rights. And I think it's important to always go back to that to remember what we're here trying to do. So your work matters. It is very important work. And your work is excellent, in my view. Uh, the vision that's laid out, this 2015 vision, which I had an overview of yesterday, and I'm going to get a chance to go through each of the sites today, is a wonderful vision. It makes sense, you know, about consolidating and moving things closer, moving yourselves down to 75 square miles, and, getting, and focusing the cleanup work. But in essence, you're laying the foundation for the future and the future of this site, and as it transitions from a cleanup mission, which of course we recognize we're going to be taking decades to do, but at the same time transitioning into work, into making sure that technology that, that you all have developed here gets an opportunity to be deployed, to create businesses, to create jobs for your community, for your family, and for the legacy that you leave behind in our children and our grandchildren. So you've done excellent work here, and you've done work clearly uh, already uh, with getting the WTP project up to the 60% completion point. I recognize there's technical challenges there. There always are. It's a very complex facility. I'm going to see it firsthand today. You've done excellent work in, in taking care of over 600 waste sites around, the, around this site and waste remediation and D&D &D of over 600 buildings around the enterprise itself. That's a tremendous amount of work, and we know that there's a lot more to be done. And my job is in looking forward to the future is to represent you in Washington when I go talk to congressmen, congresswomen, senators. I, have, I get an opportunity to tell them about the great work you're doing, about the changes you're making to get better and better every day, and to put the case before them that they need to continue to support this program. I had an opportunity to run this morning at the hotel here. I'm at the Hampton, at the right Hampton Inn down the street. And there's a trail that runs along the river. Many of you have probably been on that trail many times. For me, it was the first time. Uh, I was stunned uh, by the beauty of this area. And it's just gorgeous. And it's big, and it's important. But now I really understand you know, the name Office of River Protection. I mean, that says it all right there and taking care of the waste tanks themselves. I mean, that's what this is all about, is taking care of it. 
Dave Heisinga, uh, and I had a ch chance to chat briefly after his, uh, his trip here. And he uh, uh, gave me, he said, listen, Tom, you know, you can read all the brochures, you can look, read all the point papers, which I did. I had made sure Matt and Scott sent me everything on the plane. I read them all. Um, and you can say, well, it sounds like a very, pretty big place. But until you actually get there, drive around, go into the facilities, talk to people, you have no idea. And he was right, absolutely right. It is, this is uh, impressive. And I think I'll be even more impressed by the time the day is out as I go through. I want to talk about two things. And I'll, there'll be time for questions, so think of something good to ask me. And anything's, anything's fair game. I look forward to your questions. I'll tell you, talk about two things. One is the recent realignment that uh, has happened over the last few months. In talking with the secretary, uh, the secretary's focus is on improving the management of the department. His focus is to make sure that his overall organizational structure is set up for success. And when he looked at how the organization overall now, I'm talking big picture, was set up, we had in the environmental management program, a huge program and hugely important program underneath an undersecretary for energy. As you know, energy uh, is important for every president, and particularly President Obama has made it clear that energy is very important to the future of this country and our ability to secure jobs and to drive not only energy security, but our nation's security derives from that. So the undersecretaries that have been in that energy position have been focused, not saying that they haven't been focused on EM, but their attention has been drawn to the energy programs naturally. And I felt that, uh, and the secretary felt that the EM program needed to be under an undersecretary who spent his time thinking about complex nuclear and chemical operations all the time. And that's what I did as administrator, and that's what I do as administrator in the NNSA. Because we see a natural alignment for the kind of work that happens in the NNSA and the kind of work that happens in EM. You all are involved in very difficult operations on a day-to-day -day basis, involving materials that most organizations don't deal with, making cleaning up 50 year plus years worth of uh, waste that has built up over time. And this is inherently different than pursuing a geothermal program or solar program or a wind program where the Undersecretary of Energy's time was being spent. And so he saw that alignment as pulling these things together. My commitment to you is that I will be giving the EM program, Dave and Tracy, the attention and time it needs for you to be successful. That's one of the first things I wanted to mention. I'd be happy to take questions on that. The other reason, uh, the other thing I'd like to talk about is safety. Obviously, you know about the, there's a safety workshop here starting tomorrow. I'll have a chance to talk to that group on behalf of the secretary and Dan Poneman. And uh, this is important. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my background is in, in the Navy, in submarines, operations, and the submarine force takes safety very important. Uh, as a submarine officer, I felt uh, committed to that because your life depends on it. It's funny how that when, that when your life depends on something, you really get to focus quite a bit. And we realized at the time that a safe submarine is also a submarine that gets its mission work done. Because if things aren't safe, accidents will happen and you're not going to deploy, and you're not going to do the job that a submarine is supposed to do. And the submarine I've been on, uh, we, had a, we had a couple accidents. Uh, we had a fire in a submarine, we had a flooding incident in our submarine, and we had a very serious personal injury in our submarine. And we, f we spent a lot of time thinking about safety, and these things happened. And we found out little things that we were doing that caused these things to creep in to our psyche. So, so I'm very focused on safety, I can assure you of that. And uh, our effort here is to make sure that everybody goes home, as Matt said, the way they came to work that particular day. I'm here to listen, to learn, to thank you for the work that you've done and that you're planning on doing in the future. 
and trying to figure out what I need to do to make sure you continue in your success that you have.